Hey everyone and welcome to another episode in Python for Absolute Beginners series and before I jump on about what this video is going to be I just want to cover all the data types that we learned until this point and some special methods that we specified in each data type so in strings we had the replace method and lower and upper and so on and we also learned about lists, all right? And we discovered there the append method, remove, and also there is a method called pop in lists. And so we did in dictionaries, for example, all right? So we learned about dictionaries and their special methods were keys, for example, values, or items. All right, but what is common among all these data types, these data types are actually built in in almost any programming language and specifically in Python. But in order to make more advanced programs, we have an ability to simulate our own data type. All right, so in order to accomplish that, we use something that is called classes. Now, let's say that you want to create your own data type, let's say person, all right? And then you just want to go with something like person1.getName, something like that. And what do you know? Maybe this thing may return you Jim, John, or whatever you want to return after running such a code like this. So this is something that is possible in any programming language and the concept here is being able to understand that you can create your own data types all right so this is what classes are about classes allows us to create our own data types and then we can create instances of them just like we do with lists dictionaries and strings and with lots of more data types so we are going to do with a person data type for example so let's get started and let's give a couple of examples of how this is going to be look like in the Python programming language all right so as I said classes are like templates or blueprints to some information that you want to modelize or simulate so we can do this with a keyword called class and right after that Python expects for a name to that specific class and then we can go with something like person as I said in the introduction now pay attention that I created the person with capitalized meaning that the first letter is capitalized so this is a convention when you give your class a name alright and then what I have to do is using the empty parentheses and then the colon sign and here I am inside a class right now. So I don't want to do anything special yet inside my class, inside my blueprint. So in order to avoid from the IDE for yelling at me that there is nothing inside that class, we have a keyword that is called pass. And you may have seen that before or not, but what pass does, it simply says to Python that Hold on a second and I will complete my code here in a second but for now just don't get angry at me for not filling any code inside that indentation, alright? So pay attention to the difference if I have pass here or not have pass there. You see that I, kept, I keep getting error as you see here the red sign keep following me, alright? So it is important to write the pass here. So what I did now is actually created a new class, all right? And my second point is going to be about how you can create an object of a class or an instance of a class, all right? So we have the blueprint, which is the class person, and then we can go and create some person. And how we can do that? We can do that with assigning a variable. So let's say we will have a variable called person1, and then I can make it to be equal to an instance of that person. So what I'm going to do is calling the class name and then hit right away the empty parentheses as it is the convention 
or the rule to create an instance of a class, all right? And then what I can do, I can actually assign some attributes to my object. And how I can do that? What I have to do is grabbing that person one, for example, and then if I hit the dot sign, you see that I don't get quite anything interested yet, except that double underscore magic methods we did not discuss about yet and we will do in the future but we can assign something that is called attribute to an object of a class so this way you will have the ability to have more realistic code and program so for example i can go with something like person one dot age equals to 24 or person one dot name equals to gym or person one that favorite color equals to purple and all of those all age name and favorite color are actually attributes so what I can do later on for example I can just go with print person one dot and as you see we have some properties in the dropdown and the reason is the ID automatically recognizes the attributes I assigned to that instance. So if you look closer to the icon near each name here, you see that we have the F letter in age, name and favorite color and we have some names with the red and with the M letter. So F stands for field and M stands for methods, all right? So these are the two that we are quite interested until this point. And in the future, you will see how we can create our assigned methods to every object that we are going to create, all right? So I can print now my age. And if I duplicate those lines, I can also print the name. And also what I can do is printing my favorite color, all right? And now if I execute this program, you see that I get the same information that I just filled in to that person one, all right? So this is a basic idea of how classes are working. So you can give your own fields or attributes to a specific object of whatever class it is being created from. All right, so as we finished discussing about how you can create fields for each object of a class, now what I want to do is to show you that you can also create methods that is actually going to be common to any object that you are going to create. So in order to show you my point, what I want to do is actually deleting everything and writing some new code inside my class person. And now what I want to do is creating a method that is going to be common to each object. So I will start with creating a function inside my class. So pay attention to that, that I'm inside my class right now. And what I want to do is creating a method called print name, something like that. All right. And suddenly you see that some weird parameter in a purple color appeared to me. And why is that? You remember how I repeated every time I said that this function or this method is going to be common to every object that is going to be created from this class? Well, self is actually a convention kind of parameter that is going to be related to that specific object you currently work with. So basically, self represents the instance of the class. So by using the self keyword, we can access the attributes and methods of any class in Python. So it is very important to let that self stay there because it refers to that instance of a class you are going to create in the future and now what I can do is actually trying to return my name all right so if I go out of this class so we are having a class with one one method and then I can go with creating an instance of this class once again so we are doing it by 
the person name and put the parentheses and now if I go with let's just change it to person1 and now I can go with person1 dot and as you see I have auto completion for the print name method and as you see we have the icon of method so everything is good and now if I actually execute this excuse me for putting the return here what I want to do is actually printing Jim so this should be like that and now if I run this you see that I get Jim back alright so this is what I'm doing when I creating an instance of a class and accessing that print name but we are having a problem here the problem is when I'm going to create person2 like this and then when I hit the person to print name once again I'm going to get Jim twice but this may not be the situation maybe you have some other names that you want to print so every person has it his own names what you can do is besides accepting that self parameter that is referring to that instance you can actually accept more parameters so what I can do here is accepting one more parameter that is called name for example and now since it is a mandatory parameter what I can do is passing here something like name equals to Jim and here I can go with name equals to Michael for example and now I don't want to print Jim anymore I want to print only the name that is actually going to be given to me outside of that print name function and now if I run this you see that I get Jim in the first one and Michael in the second one so this was very basics of how to work with classes of course we are going to make stuff more dynamic in the future and we are going to learn in the next episode something that is called a constructor all right and this will allow us to write much much better classes so stay tuned and if you liked this video don't forget to crack the subscribe button and also like this video see you in the next video